Well, as you know, I recently acquired a Dalmatian iMac and a Flower Power iMac. And I got these from a gentleman from Canada. He packaged them exceptionally well. But with all these iMacs, there is one fatal flaw. And hidden behind this bezel, you can see it, is the inner bezel. The inner bezel is made out of ABS plastic. And what happens over years is the heat generated from the CRT, the chemicals that they put in the plastic that keeps it from catching on fire in the mold process, leaches out, gets brittle. So these two combination of things makes the bezels get brittle. And when you ship these things, these do not support the weight of the CRT. And unfortunately, they break loose. The monitor kind of bounces around in here, and if you're lucky, it doesn't do any damage. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the covers off. We're going to take the old bezel off, and I just recently acquired a new old stock inner bezel for the iMac G3 slot load. But I not only have one, I have two of them. One I'm going to save maybe to replicate it but this one we're going to change and bring this dalmatian back to excellent condition again so what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart we're going to pick out all the broken bits and pieces of plastic and then put the new inner bezel on it and then reinstall the case here now it's a shame on these things because these Macs in respect of the inner bezels are almost non-existent to find anymore as far as not being damaged. And on my Flower Power iMac, the bezel on that is near perfect. There's just a tiny little couple pieces missing on the underneath side of it. But as far as all this, all this, perfect. And they were both shipped the same way. But unfortunately, the Dalmatian plastic could have been a little bit more brittle in it and that's why it didn't survive the flower power one is great no problem so all right so what you have to do is you have to take the bottom cover off here first so we're going to take those two screws out those two screws out this bottom panel will come off and you can hear the uh, plastic rattling in there It just lifts off like this, like that. And we'll uh, do a little cleaning on the inside of it here. There are a few little scuff, there are some scuff marks on it. We might be able to polish those up a little bit there. Now we're just taking the outer cover off in the bezel, so we don't need to take the drive cage out or the RF shield. I think we can leave that all in there if I remember correctly. So what we need to do is we need to take the front part off here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this so we can take the front off here. All right, finally, I got it out of there, my goodness. And that's okay, no broken tabs on it. You can see all the damage here. That's all busted loose up there. 
There's the Apple logo. We definitely will need that. Yeah, it's just all damaged up here. Now these things are that cover the screws on the bezel here. These are in good shape. So that's good. That's a plus. Usually those are missing or broken. But at least three of the four mounts that hold the uh, pitcher tube CRT in are broken. And this is going to come out in pieces. Unfortunately, it is just even with acetone, um, you know, when you get a lot of small pieces missing, if they're big pieces, you can fix it pretty good. But when they're all busted up like this one is, it's really in bad shape. This whole front panel down here is all loose. It's all broken. And this also is what holds this outer case down too. But it is broken. Okay, so we finally got the uh, covers off of that. They were on there good. Finished taking this uh, bezel off here. What's left of it here anyway. And I'll tell you what, there's just uh, lots and lots of busted plastic. All right, so get all the uh, inner bezel out of there. Just trying to get all of this piece of bezel out here, what's left of it here. This is the uh, CRT mount in here. It's just, like I said, it's just uh, a poor design. If they'd have made it out of this right here, this particular plastic here, which is a polycarbonate, you wouldn't be having this problem. Because these frames, I've never ever seen one get broken because it's got a lot of laticity in it and it's not prone to the chemical decomposition from the heat and the injection mold process. So as soon as I get this out, the, out of here, we will see if we can get some more of those pieces of plastic out. And then we'll put this, start putting this back together. But there's the, all what's left of the inner bezel. Of course, that's got the microphone in there, but we have a new microphone in the other one, actually. We're gonna use it. That's the front. And there's lots and lots of little pieces like that. They're all over the garage floor here. So here's parts in our bezel right here. That's still in the frame. Does this slip in there and kind of orient it? Yeah. Speakers look really good. They don't have any dry rot on them. So. 
So, the gauzer's okay, the gauzing coil. That's cups on there good. By the way, I used to work on TVs back in the day, so I'm not afraid of high voltage. Let me just uh, get that in frame there so you can see it here. You always want to respect it. Whenever you work on anything, do it with one hand. You never want to use both hands because if it's got an electrical charge that completes the circuit, it goes right through your heart, got enough amperage, it'll kill you. It's not the voltage that kills you, it's the amperage. And we're just kind of looking around here just to see if I see any uh, other stuff here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get that inner bezel. And we're going to start reassembling it here, getting it put back together. And get her looking good again. So I got the new bezel out and it's kind of interesting. So they give you plenty of these. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to use the new ones here. We'll save the old ones for parts. All right, so let me uh, get all this stuff out of the way here. And what I do is I'll save some of these old ABS parts here because this makes excellent filler material. You put this in acetone, it gets real soft. You can roll it up like in a ball, but you can use this to fill in cracks then sand it and you won't even be able to tell there was a crack in it because it's the same material. So like if you're working on another inner bezel that wasn't as damaged as much, uh, this, this plastic works really good. And what I do is I use a little oil. Uh, when I put the screws back into the case on the inner bezel, this will allow the threads to cut through a little bit better. It'll lubricate it and help keep that, especially when I put the other covers on it, I'll put a little oil on it and that makes them slide down there a lot easier. They don't bind as much. All right, so this is the new bezel. We have the uh, microphone on it. And we are going to put this back together. We get the button on it. This is what they look like when they're new old stock and they're not broken. Now this one here actually seems pretty flexible still. This, the interesting thing about this is it has like an oil coating on it and it was probably that way from the factory. And that's kind of one way of kind of preserving it a little bit, the elasticity of it. So yeah, so we have to get this thing lined up. Now that's the hard part because the CRT has to fit in here, and then we have to fit this inside the subframe. So we have to kind of jockey this around a little bit. So let me, uh, see. here. I'm just gonna kind of shimmy it on here. Got to get that to go on, and then we got to get this to go on. Cat hair. Hmm, I wonder where that came from. Okay. Okay. Just getting it to slide on here. Got to go real slow here to get this thing to line back up. screw in there. Okay, I forgot about that. Hang on just a second here. The reason why I'm having a hard time getting this on is because there's still pieces of the old broken bezel in here. So I've been kind of getting them out. 
So what I want to do is I want to get these attached first. I'll put a little oil in here first. Okay, so we got the um, inner frame screws into the inner bezel. This one, this one, this one, this one, this side here. And uh, I don't over tighten them. I just tighten it just enough to draw it together. And what we're going to do now is now we need to actually attach the CRT to the inner bezel here. So the bottom ones, I think I'm going to get first because um, they're a little harder to get to, but I will not tighten them all the way down yet because then we need to get this in here so we can get this uh, down in here. So we're getting the... Uh, CRT in place here and again I'm just snugging it I am not cranking it in there and like I said I put a little oil in there it makes them go in there real nice and easy you don't get any of that plastic uh, binding in there so that looks good and this one here is tight I'm just making sure this degauser coil is up there where it needs to be And I think it looked pretty good there, actually. Uh, yeah, we're good. So yeah, so we are looking marvelous. Now, all I think I have to do is just put the uh, screws in for the bottom of the CRT here, and then uh, we will be ready to go back together. And like I said, uh, this bezel is not brittle at all. It's very pliable. It feels totally different than the original one. In fact, let me compare it to you. I want to show you what the difference in color is. So this one's got more of a yellowish dingy color where this one actually looks more, not quite a platinum color, but quite a bit lighter. And like I said, it's not brittle at all. And I'm very, very uh, impressed how well that is aged. Obviously it was kept out of the ultraviolet and away from heat. And it was all wrapped up in plastic. And like I said, it had kind of like an oilish layer to it. So I'm going to put in the bottom CRT screws here and of course these are harder because you get the uh, speaker kind of in the way all right well the inner bezel is all put back together here uh, you can see the uh, tube is nice and tight against there uh, yeah this is the way they used to look when they were brand new okay all nice and flush in there um, Excellent. So now we're going to put the covers back on it and get this thing looking good again. Now, one thing I will say is this Dalmatian is, is not really a true Dalmatian. And the reason why I say that is your Dalmatians and your Flower Power and a couple other Max, when they're 500, 600, and 700 megahertz, the uh, logic board underneath of it, the processor is located a little bit differently. They will plug into it just like the rest, the 400 and 300 and megahertz machines, but the processor is that far off the heat sink. And the reason being, too, is that metal frame, that aluminum frame, the heat sink is actually made on the frame it's like a bump it's not an add-on like you see on these where they're screwed on the other ones are made it so if you take and you try to put a 500 megahertz board on this without checking that the uh, cpu die is not going to be on the heat sink and you're going to fry it just in a matter of seconds so buyer beware just be careful that uh, if you have a uh, if you want to put a 600 or a 500 or 700 megahertz on your Mac, your iMac, you got to have the right frame, that piece of aluminum. 
And so that's what I'm, my next thing is, is I'm going to try to locate that so I can actually put the official 500 megahertz board in this thing that I took off my flower power. Uh, I, I ordered a, a 600 megahertz for that machine. And that way I was going to upgrade this from the 450 to the 500 megahertz because your flower powers and Dalmatians, they were made to order either five or 600 megahertz. You could even put a 700 megahertz board in it too, if provided you got the proper heat sink in it. So anyway, yeah, just a little FYI there. So we're going to put the covers on it, get it looking good again. Okay, so we got the little caps back on here. We got the cover back on it, and I don't have the screws in the bottom yet. That's what I got to do. And then we can put the front bezel on it and uh, be looking good. Yeah, we are almost done there. We got the top ball on it. We got the front back on it. Now we just have to put the bottom back on it. We're done. Okay, so we got this uh, thing all back together here. And uh, it, uh, it's not any lighter, that's for sure. But we are in good shape again. And as you can see, it looks nice and tight in there. No breaky breakies, brand new bezel. Now I think I probably will polish it up a little bit here. I'll have to use my auto polisher and kind of polish some of this stuff up and make it look a little nicer here. But yeah, looks pretty good. Like I said, the, when I get um, the actual proper metal plate, the metal main frame that goes into this thing, uh, then it will be totally uh, correct. But right now we just have to live with it being a 450 megahertz Dalmatian. But yeah, I'm glad we uh, found that bezel. And no more ugliness. It's all nice and tight, doesn't rattle. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Like I said, the flower power, its bezel is near perfect. I'm not worried about it. And yeah, so the next thing we're going to do uh, not today, obviously, but we're going to replace the uh, optical drive and the uh, flower power. Uh, the optical drive in that one is not working very good. And I got another one and we're going to put in it and uh, we'll have to test out and make sure it works. So anyway, this is the, the Dalmatian iMac. And got that lovely Dalmatian pattern on it. So anyway, guys, uh, like I said, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit how to put the bezel on it, the one that's new. It's not a complete tutorial, but it kind of gives you the general idea. And other than that, though, this thing looking pretty good. We'll just do a little polish on it. Again, not today. We'll do that at a later point. I'll probably wait till the weather warms up a little bit because it's very, very freezy cold out here in the garage. So anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you can get all the notifications whenever we do a new video or a live stream. We're also on MeWe and Twitter. You can reach out to me there. And we're also on Rumble and Odyssey, those platforms as well. You guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.